Hey, what's up, everybody? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm gonna be showing you how to add echo and reverb into your sound in Adobe Premiere Pro. So echo and reverb is important because the world has echo and reverb. So sometimes if we have a sound effect, we wanna apply it to a room or a cathedral, or in this situation, this corridor, we want it to sound like it's actually there. So if we add the echo and reverb in, we get that effect. So this is what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to be taking this piece of footage right here and this sound effect right here. As you can see, does not fit with the footage at all. There's no echo and reverb. We've all been in you know, a situation like this with a lot of reverb. And if something sounded like this, we would all be like, what on earth? Like, how is that happening in this space? It feels wrong. And so what we wanna do is we wanna make it feel right. And so all we have to do is add a little reverb to it and then manipulate it. And that's what we're gonna be going over. And we get this. which sounds a whole lot better. Sounds like that the footsteps are actually happening in the scene and it sounds like it was recorded naturally and that's what we want. That's our goal is to make it look like we didn't add it in to make it look like it's actually in the scene. So let's get started. This is a pretty easy effect to pull off. All we need is to have our original footage and then just to drag in our audio or manipulate whatever audio you have there. So I'm gonna drag this in and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut it down to the length over here. And so originally it's a little bit soft. It sounds exactly like the original version there, like so. First thing we wanna do is let's go ahead and turn on this loop button right here. This is gonna help us loop through the audio and keep listening to it. If you have a really, really long sequence and you're working within sort of um, a little part of the sequence, you can go to this end and hit O and that's gonna create an out point. Go to the beginning and click I and that'll create an end point. And then whenever you play it back, it'll loop through the, the in point and the out point. So for example, if I just brought this all the way in, you'll see that it just keeps looping in there. So find the place you wanna loop, hit that loop button. If it's not there, click the plus button. It'll be in here, find it, drag it in, click it, you're good to go. So now that we have the loop going, let's go ahead and add in our effects. So we're going to go into the audio right here, go down to effects. And then what we wanna look for is surround reverb. This is in your audio effects folder right here in the effects panel. You can search for it as well. Maybe make it a little bit easier to find. Uh, this is a more recent effect. I don't know exactly when they added it in, but they added it in with the last three or four years. So definitely have your Premiere Pro relatively up to date to find this effect. Click the surround reverb, drag it on, to your footage. And now you'll instantly see if we play it back that it's almost dead quiet. And that's because we have to do a couple of different effects to it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go in here to edit. And you'll notice that what we have over here is we have a gain here. And if we go to here, right click on it and go to audio gain, we also have a gain here. So what's the difference? Well, this right here is sort of a pre-processed gain. So this is going to go on before all the other effects. And that's bad because even if we bring this up to the maximum, so this is the peak amplitude. This means if we go over 12, there's going to be a point in here where it peaks the audio and we get distortion. So this is kind of the max that we wanna to go to. So even if we bring it up to the max and we listen to it again, it's still almost dead quiet. And so if we go in here and you know, we're like, okay, well, we have to bring it up really, really loud now to get it to actually sound like something, we're, we're actually gonna start getting a little bit of distortion and we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is let's just bring this up to the, the peak that it should be at, which is 12. Whoops. We wanna bring set gain to 12, like so. And then this is going to be the post processing. So it's going to take this audio, it's gonna link it in here, and then we're going to apply some gain after that. So this is gonna reduce all the sound down because that's how what reverb typically does. And we're just gonna say bump that audio up after the effect is done. So now if we bring this up to like, say 15, we can actually hear the effect. And you know, we maybe wanna bring that up a little higher, maybe you wanna bring it up a little lower, but this is how we're gonna to get to be able to actually hear the effect. So now we have a very good start. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna go into that edit as well and get back to here. And then we wanna choose sort of our reverb settings here. I just went ahead and went with the cathedral. It sounds like it would fit the most here, but there's a bunch of different options here. So definitely just go through all the options and sort of play around with them. Feel, you know, what are they, what do they work with? Um, see if one really just stands out to you. 
I'm again went with the cathedral. It has that very echoey sort of sound to it, and so that's what we're gonna do. Now the only thing is, this is not as big as a cathedral, so there's too much reverb. So I'm actually going to bring down the room size a little bit, and I just bring it down to maybe around 37% is what I found worked best with this scenario. So now if we go ahead and play this back. We see it's sounding really good right now. The other things that you can adjust are the dampening uh, low frequency, dampening high frequency, pre-delay, front width, and surround width. So the two dampenings, uh, it grabs the low frequencies or the high frequency and it sort of dampens it. it, it shrinks the dynamic range and it reduces the gain on both of those. And so you can sort of grab the, the different parts of the sound effect and really just make them sort of sound how you want. These aren't something that I can really tell you, you know, you want to do this for this situation, you want to do this for this situation. All it is is just sort of play around with them, drag this up to 100, drag it down to zero, and sort of figure out what it works with or what it's doing to your audio, and then work with that. Um, see if you need to bring it to anywhere else or if the defaults are fine. Sort of all of this. The pre-delay is the same. It sort of adds a little bit of a uh, delay before the sound effect and the echo kick in. Works in certain situations, doesn't work in other situations. Front width is how sort of wide the sound is in your ears. You can make the echo, you know, really, really sort of direct at you, or you can really like expand the echo outwards. Over here, the only ones that you really need to look at are gain, and maybe if you want to like bring the left, right, or forward, back balance, uh, sort of put it in 3D space, that's also pretty good. The C wet level is sort of uh, out of the scope of this tutorial. Um, so, but you can again play around with it, see if you like one sound or the other. Then once you are done, all you have to do is, well, really nothing. It's already applied the effect to it. So the effect is ready to go. And all you have to do is just render out your footage. And you're good to go. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below or on our website at adobemasters.net. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go to that subscribe button and make a video every other day on Adobe-related products. And until next time, guys, see ya.